Ian and Dawn Pirani began farming goats in 1979 and have been very involved in the industry since then. About 1% of the world's supply of mohair fibre is produced from Angora goats in New Zealand, but the Piranis believe we can do more. Fibre goats in New Zealand started very early in the piece, at the turn of the century. They got brought into New Zealand and then they got ignored and turned out and some of them went wild, like the Waipu Angoras, and they went bush and survived. They were amazing animals when they were finally caught back into the industry. And, um, and from then we, we've had different small importations of odd ones from Australia. Um, until the South African ones came on stream, which we were lucky that they came direct into New Zealand in the, in the um, 90, end of the 1980s. In the 1980s, we had a crazy situation of supply and demand and the prices just shot through the roof. But a lot of it was created from the tax situation and the Queen Street farmers, as we called them, came into the industry that knew nothing about the animals and had an awful lot of money surplus and paid crazy prices for animals. And they went off to farmers in large quantities, large studs were brought in from Australia, and often the farmer that was farming them didn't know how to farm goats. They are a different animal to farm than than uh, sheep and cows, which we were very used to here. And um, they started causing big problems of no shelter and babies falling over. And, and then the tax law changed. And overnight, the industry just poof, fell off and went down the gutter. Come on, come on, come on. The situation with the fibre goat industry now is very positive for the fibre. The world demand is still there. The fashion market overseas still wants it. Come on, come here. I've always enjoyed them. When Dawn and I decided to go farming them, uh, I'm the sort of person that goes and does the background stuff so that I know what we're involved in. And we did that and um, we went around and had a look at goats in Australia and, and um, Texas and uh, South Africa. Uh, and um, made the decision on what we wanted to farm. Good boy. Stay. You've never touched his feet? No, I have never touched his feet. And he uh, and his kids working out the same. I'll hold him if you want to have a look at them. I'm on the Federated Farmers Goats Council and Mohi New Zealand Council. What we were trying to do is to show New Zealand farmers, the role that goats could play in profitable farming, how they could control weeds and undesirable plant species and turn them into money, either meat or fibre. We need to show them that fencing was the number one requirement, boundary fencing. As you know, goats are browsers. They need to move from food to food and they know when it's best to select that food and they, they're the best judges of it rather than me. And so they go out and crop it and they get rid of the seed head and the uh, undesirable species don't breed. And so you make progress and make money. I can't understand why more farmers, particularly young farmers who are looking for profit, greater profits per hectare, why they just aren't incorporating goats into their farming systems, like whether they're milking cows or running sheep and cattle, whatever. Fit goats into it, slot them in and and make that extra surplus out of undesirable plant species that their other stock won't eat uh, and, and make a profit. This fleece here is from that weather that we were looking at in the yards. He certainly clips a very good fleece for a five-year-old. That's, you know, it's all very well for one and two-year-olds to be clipping you a, a good fleece. It's good length. Good style and character to it. It's very nice, and that, that is quite weighty. This will be coarser than a lot of sheep fibre. This is looks at about 34 microns. A little bit coarser because of his age, no doubt. When he was younger, he would have had a pretty fine fleece to him. The weight that you should be getting off your animals. The first year up, well, you'd like to think that you can get a kilo from there, 
at 12 months of age. They're clipped every six months, and that's trying to get your maximum fibre length out of each fleece. You need the minimum of 90 mils to make a very good product. We like to think that a good fleece will run out at up to 120. These have all been skirted, these fleeces, so they really haven't got any staining in them. But if you've got a fleece that's got marks on it of whatever, you pull that out and, and that goes into stains. Now, we can get $4.50 for stains, and until just recently, you couldn't get that for wool, for, for the main body of wool, and we were getting it for our stains. So that's where I find it hard why, why farmers didn't go into taking on a few of these guys when their product was so low in price. I know it's increased now, but uh, it uh, certainly wasn't for a long time. The end market for this product is the finer line, the kid line and things, is, is high fashion garments because it is a fantastic product to, to wear. The lot of the coarser lines coming through to your adult hair goes into carpets, it's a backup in carpets. It goes into velour for uh, furnishings and, um, and I don't know these days, it used to be put into uh, materials for seats on aeroplanes and things like that because it's very hard wearing. It's a very strong, strong product. If you take a piece of fibre like that and try and break it, you, you just, unless there's something wrong, the animal has been ill, you cannot break that fibre. It's very, very strong. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.